Hi, this is VA, Virginia Shank. Welcome to Vocal Journeys, where voicing yourself ignites passion for the planet. This is a series, informal, casual series that I've started recording on Zoom to share with you with some of my favorite musicians, vocalists, humans, artists, in how they're dealing with the pandemic of COVID-19. And for a lot of us, that's very different. Um, it's, it's a very real time. I know for me, I've had personally some family dealing with COVID and you may too. Um, my folks are doing okay and I hope that you all are as well. But um, we wanna shed some light on what else is happening on the periphery with the arts, with our voices. Today I have with me wonderful, wonderful human that I just adore. She lights up the room when she walks in. Um, I know her mostly as a jazz vocalist, and that's how we came to know each other. But she really has quite um, more of a following as an actor because she is all that. She has been in, when Stella gets her groove, got her groove back, one of my favorite films. Um, she won an NAACP Outstanding Image Award for the Outstanding Supportive Actress in a Motion Picture of Tap, where she was alongside Gregory Hines and Sammy Davis Jr. She's been on NYPD Blue, Law and Order, Touched by an Angel, so many things that she can share with us. But also in her later years, in her adult years, she has gotten a master's in jazz vocals from the Manhattan School of Music. Please welcome with me today, Suzanne Douglas. Hi, Suzanne. Hmm. Oh, V, thank you. What a lovely introduction. Oh, well, you are all that. You are so many things. And um, first of all, I'll just say, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, that I guess that's kind of weird to say. I, I kind of hesitate saying that I'm an introverted extrovert, so the shift in the paradigm has uh, just kind of been my business as usual. Um, I continue to live. I continue to write music, produce music, um, look for ways to develop myself as a musician so that I can take that back into the classroom so that I can share that information with um, my students and then have a, a wider, uh, birth of knowledge to exchange with fellow artists like yourself. Well, I love that. And for all of us, I think during this time, there can be days when, um, you know, it's wonderful for having great days. And for some of us, it's not. And some of us, it's a, a, a wave that we're maybe riding. Mm -hmm. um, but so, um, you know, in instances like that, one of the things that but once again, this is, this is my normal. I have a group of girlfriends who I surround myself with, who I encourage, who encourage me, who I nurture either their children um, or bless them with a visit to pick up their boys to go to get their hair cut or um, coach at a, a speech competition, coach a student you know, in a speech competition. So you look for ways to um, give of yourself I know that might sound a little corny, um, so that um, you're part of a community of exchanged ideas and thoughts, um, uh, arts, beliefs, um, interests, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that has, you know, community has come up, of course, for so mm -hmm. many of us. Um, and um, I hear that, that you've got a strong community and I, and I love knowing that and it doesn't surprise me at all um, and how we can hang together and support each other. Um, so let's maybe come back to that, but let me start, start kind of um, at square one. Could you tell us, you know, what is your vocal journey? And when I ask that, I mean, the, the greater metaphor of voice, it could be how, of course, the steps of, you know, growing up and finding your voice, but you use it in so many different ways. But what, what does that mean to you when I ask, what is your, what has been your vocal journey? Can you walk us through that? Well, 
It's so interesting that you asked that question about giving voice. And I would say to speak, to have a voice, to be a part of the conversation. And being a part of that conversation entails showing up, not just for yourself, but for the world. I mean, it's we, this situation is a pandemic. It shows our connectivity to one another and the things on this gorgeous planet that unfortunately we've taken for granted. Right. We, and I say we, we've allowed those who are in power to rape us of our most natural resources, not just those things on the planet, but our humanity. Where's yeah. the human part of that? Where is that? Where's the kindness in humankind? So yeah. I keep, you know, I don't want to say they, because we can hold one another accountable. And I just believe that music, is the great community around bringing us together. And my journey as a musician began late in life, but my love of music began very early. It's just another way to voice, another way to share. Yeah. Um, just as acting, different, but another way it's like it in jazz when we scat we scat because we want to say it another way right we want to tell the story again a different way right right so we are improvisers or i see myself as an improviser in life um most women are improvisers we know how to and and, and if you ask a black woman we know how to make something from nothing in a minute <laughs> So um, we're just used to having to do that, uh, unfortunately. Um, we are in a very dark place in our world. It's not just here, but we feel the, the, we feel the pain of these black mothers and fathers and sisters and aunties. And we know the pain that they're going through if you're black. Uh, absolutely. You know? And it's something that's, it's pervasive. It's, it's this insidious racism is part of the fabric of this nation, unfortunately. And unless we start to really address it and just acknowledge it, hello, this right. is how this was built. Now right. let's move on. How do we do that so that we're not burning buildings down and choking one another and lynching one another and burning one another and raping one another? And that's not our true consciousness is spiritual beings okay not to get metaphysical on you but well, you can totally uh, get just, metaphysical i just <laughs> super fit. i think we're spiritual beings at our purest at our best right. having this kind of um there's a, a gospel tune uh about being a spiritual being a spiritual being having a natural experience right right so that one because that's it that's where we're at our highest consciousness right when yep. we're compassionate and empathetic and we're, we're not just hearing something, but we're listening to one another. We're listening to what we're saying. Right. It's almost like a bigger ear. Like I um, want to think of myself as a big ear, like taking it all in. There's so much information besides just this ear. But I want to go back to something you just said about... Um, you know, black women knowing how to really improvise. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. But when I think like even just the jazz tradition came to us, that be this beautiful art form came out of a horrific experience. Yes, had there not been slavery. Right. And it's not just jazz. That's the mistake that we... Fair enough. Ms. Burns just talked about our contribution to country music and, mm -hmm. and if it were not for the uh, Muslims who made up a 30 percent uh, portion of all of those who were enslaved who were brought here bringing their syncopation and yeah. their different harmonics and you know we would never have the influences that we have in so many so much of our music in America 
Um, so yes, out of a horrific experience, uh, the blues was born out of a horrific experience. Uh, we were able to moan that pain. We were able to be inventive, make something out of nothing, and come up with an instrument that was a gourd on the continent, but became the banjo. Yeah. Where, where bones on the continent became some type of shaker. You know, so we're inventive. I mean, you, not just inventive, but the cradle of civilization comes from the continent of Africa. And, science comes from the continent of africa all and, that you know so it's we're not talking about and that's what's so sad is that there's this misnomer that these were ignorant people being brought here mm. when you think of this there's history older than our history yeah. filled with wonderful things filled with their own tragedies their own enslavements their own but they were theirs right, right? they were right. theirs yeah and to be clear to those who are, might be listening to this, because this we're recording this on Friday, May 29th. So when you alluded um, to some of the rioting and things that are going on, let's, you know, to put that in context, um, what we're talking about is the um, George Floyd uh, killing just a few days ago, the rioting last night in um, Detroit, Kentucky, and so, you know, so many other places, uh, sorry, Minneapolis, uh, Minneapolis yes. um, my apologies. Um, yeah, so, you know, we, under the stress of this pandemic, already th these things that have been happening, which are not new, I, I understand that, um, but of course, it's just another layer of the intensity of emotion that we're feeling and frustration. Um, so I just want to put that in context of when people mm -hmm. are listening to this as a timeline. Um, anything more you want to say about that? Mm. Mm. Okay. So tell me, let's, let's sidestep then. So when did you okay. get aware of the power of your voice? Oh, that's easy. I was five. I love it. Okay. And it, and it wasn't necessarily the power of my voice, but the power of the voice. Okay. And what it could do. And what, even, even words, even words. Um, it wasn't just music, but just the voice, being able to give voice to your feelings, giving, being able to give voice to your thoughts, your dreams, your aspirations, so that, that you feel like you have a place in the world, right? So was there and that made me I was that made me feel that that I had a place in the world that I had a, a purpose, albeit a very baby, baby, five year old, six year old or so I think I must have been six or seven. And we, we were performing uh, Engelbert Humperdinck's uh, operetta Thumbelina oh. I was in, in the chorus. Thumbelina, what are you saying? Thumbelina, who are you? Right? Only but it was a kid's voice, right? Sure. So, uh, and there was this gorgeous little chocolate of a dot girl. She had a yellow dress, and she was Thumbelina. And my mama had made. Uh, do you remember uh, <laughs> paper mache? Of course. Of course, you're from the south, so you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you know, it's like crepe paper for those of you who don't know, but um, you can make all of these things from crepe paper, and so you could. We had objects made out of that, and costumes as well. Well, they were stapled together and they were not to have been rained on, but mine got a few drops of rain, but then the sun came out and so it, it wasn't devastating, but I was so concerned that my costume would have been ruined, but, you know, because it wouldn't have allowed me to give voice to this production, this community mm. around that voice, that a notion that there's power in words, that's why journalists are always silenced in any regime that wants to suppress, right? So um, you, you, those that get the information out to people, are, we're going to make them suspect. And if we keep you uneducated, then you won't need to look or think to look. You won't even be curious because, it, you know, God forbid, uh, that's one of the reasons I love education. It makes you curious about the world. You should. Yes, 
Yes. I'm thinking too that there um, is a new museum in DC called, I think it's the Word Museum. Ooh. And it's just opened, or at least it's just tried to open before the pandemic. Yes. So, um, well, thank you. Yeah, thank something you'll have to keep an eye on um, for everyone listening to um, the Word Museum. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Your thing. Mm -hmm. um, I love to share, right? Um, so sometimes, you know, there are things that we say literally in our words, and that's one end of the spectrum of voicing ourselves. And then there's the emotion, the things said, not said, the mm -hmm. say quoi, the things that come around it. Do you have anything to say about that? Maybe how you present? Yeah, the things that you don't say, it's such a musical thought, isn't it? Mm, I because, think. Because, so. yeah, well, it's the equation is quiet thought equals rest in music. And in that rest, in those moments of rest, we're really not resting, we're thinking. We're listening, we're counting, we're still grooving on the music, so we're feeling, so all of our very being is fired up to receive. If, if we're honest with ourselves and open and prepared to receive the music and you've done the work, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, all that's in place, right? Then you utilize the, the totality of who you are as an artist. And then it's playful because it's informed, you yeah. know where you are in the beat, you know, you know where you are in the tune, you know. And so you can take the freedom to sit in the quiet, to hit in the, sit in the rest, to sit and listen to the other musicians. Yeah, it's what we don't speak, which can be the most powerful. It's what we don't say that really can make our hearts sing when we listen to music, right? Yeah. I teach that to my students all the time, you know, I said, you know, time is half the tune, the tempo, all the things surrounding the time, around the piece. It affects the groove. It affects how fast you get the lyrics out. Sometimes you may need to slow it down depending on what it is you're trying to say or not say, right? And it all matters. Yeah, yeah it all matters. Yeah, and that's part of, to me, the, commu the um, conversation, the communication, uh, the repartee, the all mm -hmm. that matters. Yeah. Yeah. And can vary from time to time, from moment to moment, can vary from, you know, singing this song this time as to pose to the next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's very important for us to not get locked into singing a tune in the same way all the time. I know. Because the setting will change. Right. Your, your musicians might change. You might want to you know, you might want to do it as a solo instrument to find a, find a ballad. I love doing, perhaps I had a wicked childhood. Yeah. I must have, right? It's a great tune to just do, and it's just so melodic. You know, they just wrote incredible music, Rodgers, Rodgers and Hammerstein, yeah. It's one of my favorite musicals. I love the sound of music. Oh, me too. Yeah, it's just, it's just, like, oof, just love it, you know? Yeah. But uh, I mean, you know, Great American Songbook comes from all those great, you know, show tunes and some movie films, you know, movie tunes from the 30s and 40s. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, Suzanne, tell us, um, I know that you do teach at um, college. Yeah, I love it. I love teaching. How's that going? Are you finished now for the semester? I semi just did. I finished. But, you know, you're never really finished when it comes to uh, education. Yeah. Yeah both for yourself and your student um well i don't want to be through i, I want to keep learning forever yeah, dig it it's dig it the most fun it is it yeah. is and it's nice going back into the classroom and offering them a different perspective on uh, material that some of them may know but a different perspective yeah well it's going to be the suzanne douglas perspective well not just mine because i'm actually trying to we have, we have a very interesting situation at our, at our college in that we have um, a large uh, international population, as do most, most community colleges too. Most colleges actually around America, like between 50 and 52 percent, which a lot of people don't realize, of the student body, because they pay not just top dollar, they're paying premium dollar for an education. 
Yeah. So there's going to be a huge paradigm shift with, with regards to um, our educational system and how we teach moving forward and who take a, we're going to really have to take a look at who we are teaching, you know, because we really need to educate our nation. We need to educate our nation. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. Absolutely. So um, Suzanne, you said, um, you know, I'm thinking like during this time, during this pandemic, which changes things a little bit, but you've said that mostly your work is carrying on mm -hmm. is. Yeah. And okay. Awesome. It's, and a lot of mine is too, except for performances, which have been scrapped, but for another time in some other way. Um, um, but can you tell us what you're working on now? Yeah, what? I'm, I'm Not very excited about it. Oh. <laughs> well, um, I'm working on, you know, it's interesting. I do a, a thing, you know, I don't know, maybe you do this as well. There are certain things that I work on as a musician so that I can put it into my work. Absolutely. So I'm looking to do some arranging on a solo show that I'm co-writing with a colleague of mine. We've been working on it since last year around, uh, we took our first meeting late November and have been um, working uh, diligently, actually. We, meet, we were meeting once a week, and then we, we, uh, we went down to every other week, and now uh, Nehesayu is uh, away riding and uh, pulling it all together. It's been lo really lovely. So she gives me these amazing prompts, and she's asked probably some of the most profound questions that people have, someone has ever asked. And one of, one of the questions that really sticks with me was, um, was there something you'd like to, you, you wished you hadn't done? Mm. And I said, oh God, yes. And of course there were many things, but you know, she only asked for one. So I was only going to give her one. Yeah. You know, I lived a long life. It's been a good one, but it, it's been a long life. So, you know. Is this show about your life? It's, it is not, yeah, it's memoir-like. Okay. And it's a new genre. Nice. Uh, we're coining and uh, we're still working on that. So I'm trying to tell you about it without telling you about it. I understand. Um, but, but I will say, she, when she asked me that question, I immediately realized that the, what I should have done was I should have chosen to be a music student. I had the opportunity to become a music student rather than a theater student. I thought that I might be able to manage them both, but no such luck. I've, I've had a lovely career. I still have a lovely career That's as an actor. I've been doing some voiceovers. I, I, there's a couple of books I've voiced. And most recently I have a piece out that deals with the fair housing practices um, that have been happening or not so fair housing practices. Uh, with the Department of Justice, I've been doing these uh, um, podcasts for them, dealing with Wonderful. women in Section 8 housing. So, you know, that type of thing. Uh, you know, you still continue to work as an artist. Working as an artist, as, particularly as a jazz musician, we, we have this rich history of teaching. That's still working at being an artist. Yep. Um, you know, depending on uh, the era, uh, that information was passed on different ways. Bebop, they were throwing it down to one another on stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it was kind of sink or swim. Oh, right? boy. Oh, it was, boy. It was like, let me go and get some knowledge and I'll come back. Although, yeah, that did happen to Coltrane. You know, they, they, the rumor has it he was laughed off the stage when it came back, and then, oh, the rest is history. Yeah. Right. Lots of ways to learn. Right, yeah. exactly. So, and a, a lot of ways to exist be and not just exist financially i'm not talking about that i'm talking about um, always having your 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 artistic soul protected so that you can create so that you can be spontaneous and inventive right and this and what we do best is collaborate so that's important that was important to me before our shift in paradigm it's important to me now probably more so i'm spending way too much time at my keyboard Oh. Um, and way too much time, um, I'm re re redeveloping a course to co-teach with a colleague of mine at Borough of Manhattan Community College, where we teach. And it's been so exciting. It's been so exciting uh, thinking about what is the best way to reach our students? What is it that they're missing? 
why can't we get them excited about learning, get them curious, mm -hmm. right? Because they're tired of listening and walk, looking at the talking head. You know, what can we do? How can we be creative? And we're in the creative arts yeah. to attract and keep our students engaged in and their brings, learning. Yeah. And so this brings it back to, um, you know, the, the community, the communal spirit, the improvisational spirit um, that this pandemic is having us, um, whether we like it or not, pivot and turn on a dime to do things differently, which we're good at. But boy, it's really making a change of how we do things, how we might look at things, how we might approach things, how we might offer things, right? Oh, of course. Any shift in paradigm like this, it, it, it allows us to first, not only just change, but there needs to be a real time of stillness. Mm -hmm. That quiet we talked about that rest in the music this is a reboot it's i'd love to see the animals coming out to repopulate the earth and it's interesting it happened over the spring when all of life is budding and, and becoming anew right yes they probably there are probably species that we were probably responsible we would have been responsible for their extinction would it were, were it not, would it were not for this reboot right yeah and I love Mother Earth just coming in all her glory, you know, no matter mm -hmm. what. Wow, what a display. What a right. display. Yeah. Absolutely. So now I want us to be better stewards of the earth, better stewards and caregivers of one another. Yes. That's what I want to see happen. Yes. We already know, well, some of us have known for many years, some of us, are becoming awakened to the fact that they, these disparities exist and have existed. But once again, like racism, like sexism, right. we have to say this is part of what this country was founded in, which is ironic. And really at the basic level of health and existence. I mean, the light is really shown <clears throat> on that and the disparity and, and holes in the systems. Well, it's not just in health, it's, it's in uh, education, it's in housing, mm. it's everywhere. The disparities are everywhere. It's in our, yes. our penal institutions, it's everywhere. And, and the thing is, it's been this way for, pardon me, in the black community, centuries. Sure, sure. And it's yeah. never been addressed. And so now folks have to take a real hard look. And it's not just about what they should do. Ask yourselves, what are you doing? How am I part of the problem? Because if you're not, you know, if you're not part of the problem, then you have to be a part of the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. Thank you. And I, I certainly agree, you know, that um, we've all got to step up to the plate. And mm -hmm. some of us may be more than others, you know. Um, so the shining the light on um, things that maybe not everyone has been aware of. Mm. Um, but you know, it's interesting, you know, so do you think that some, that, well, I don't know, I think I understand what you mean by that. I, I think I took that too literally, that some others more than, that there are others who really need to step up to the plate more with that regards to that. I, they may need to, but I think there's certain people who are just incapable of doing that. If um, they were capable in their humanity of doing that, they would have done that. And the thing that, that that's, it's the, the, the thing that's most off-putting in this whole thing is that his ride or die crew have been duplicitous mm -hmm. with their greed and avarice and ignorance. Yeah. At, at the, and this is the hard part that's so painful at the detriment to their constituents who don't even realize it yeah. breaks my heart. Yeah. It's the, uh, it, to me, it's like the, it's the weakest link of humanity that we're seeing. That's so hard to look at, but that's mm. where the communal spirit, those of us, who think we're in the know, you know, 
need to help raise the bar. Yeah, but I don't know if those who we might perceive as weaker is all is that are all that weak. Uh, you know what I mean? I I I, th I think that not the best word. I need another word, Susie. I think that there's what you say. The, you know, and it's more than one word. It's um, because I don't think that people who support our president are bad people necessarily. That's not what I'm saying. Or good people. I'm not putting a value on that. But I am saying that they have someone in their life that they feel compassion for. And there needs to be this emotional intelligence yeah. that needs to be awakened in them. Because that's where compassion comes in. Because you can't teach someone overnight. Yeah. The actions that people are making are things that they were taught over years. You, you're taught to hate. I just don't think a pure, innocent baby comes into this world filled with hate. No, I know it. Right? So, that, and, that, and that's at the core of your being that you're being taught that. So... That's why education and you're exposed to other environments, other foods, other cultures, other people, other languages. Sure. Right. Yeah. You're not looking at the same thing every single day. Yeah. I don't want that. The world is too far, it's far too interesting for just one kind of anything. Well, and that's why, you know, I sort of subtitled this, you know, people who I love to bring into this forum of discussion of, igniting passion for the planet um, mm -hmm. and really feel that from you, see that from you. Um, we just have a little bit of time left, Suzanne. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us about who you are as a human, as an artist, what's fueling you right now, what you're most passionate about? Well, I think I shared with you what I'm most passionate about. Sure. You know, um, Family, That's community. It. Say again. I'm, I'm most passionate about family. Family. That's the first community. Yeah. Right? That structure is the first community. That's why it's so important to raise your kids up right. Because they're going to be going out into the world with whatever legacy that you instill in them. If you instill a legacy of hate in them, then your kids will walk down the street with tiki torches. Yeah. And they don't think for a moment how threatening that might be to them if people were walking into their community and doing that. That's empathy. That's yeah. human kindness. And that's mirrored in behavior. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. And taught with love. So... I know this is a big stretch. Yeah, we see people like that and they're broken. That's the bottom line. That doesn't make what they do right. That doesn't make the killings right. No. That doesn't make the pain in our society right. We make it right. We are God's hands on earth. That's God in us. That's what that is. Where his eyes and hands, he gave us his love example. Yeah. But we ignore that love. We ignore his love. We ignore one another's love. We don't acknowledge the best in one another or look for it or look to ways to encourage that. That was one of the things I learned this year. Really became very solid for me and very clearly defined gifts and talents. My talents are one thing, but my gifts or where my soul is fit. Oh, I love that. Right? Because yeah. when you have your, 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 your gifts are compassion, patience. Those are all the things that we need to nurture one another, to hear one another. Because not everyone is going to be able to get the conversation out as quickly as we would like or get invited to the party or the awareness of what's happening in their world as quickly as we would like. So we have to be inventive in the ways in which we reach people so that we can reach them. Now, I'm gonna tell you, some people are unreachable and unlovable. So you bless them and release them as my big mom used to say. 
I know that's right. Right? Yeah. Well, Suzanne, um, thank you so much for taking this time with me. Thank and, you. Um, um, I love that where our conversation has gone and the, the wisdom that you've shared with all of us uh, from your life experience and your vocal journey. And I know that everyone that you come to meet will be blessed by your voice and your teaching. Um, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Be well, be safe, and sing on, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>